Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Classic Video Games back with another cool crane repair video for you this evening. We get a lot of uh, people that enjoy whenever we fix these old crane machines. So we've got one in here that we haven't really done much on and we're going to uh, we're going to film it and show you how to fix yours if you've got this same exact type. Now, this is the old school big choice crane. If you have an action crane, I believe that is the same exact thing um, and uses the same board. This is the old PCB that uses three relays and I'll show you those here in a minute. We're gonna figure this sucker out and hopefully this will help you fix yours. I'm gonna go through it step by step show you how we fix one from not working right to working if we're capable of doing it and I think I am it's such a simple uh, little schematic um, that uh, it should be possible I'm also going to show you the schematic which is kind of rare we got it from PC John on uh, the killer list of video games he posted it up a few years ago the schematic for this little board and it's such a simple little setup that we ought to be able to figure it out get it working and if we get ours working then you will know how to get yours working so let me show you which crane we're talking about a lot of these look similar but basically this is the one that says big choice at the top I'll turn it on here in a second so you can see it a little better um, this one has a bunch of jewelry in it but you know yours will probably have stuffed animals in it or whatever we're gonna put stuffed animals in this one and uh, probably set it up for home use we may even put it on free play depending on what's wrong with it this is the early one that only has two buttons. So the newer cranes all have a joystick, but whenever they first came out, I don't think any of them had a joystick. I think they all had buttons. So this is the old school big choice crane or action crane that has two buttons, a forward button and a sideways button. Um, so we'll see if we can figure it out. So very simple gantry on it. It's your typical crane setup. Okay. And we've got a cool problem with ours, where basically it won't coin up and let you play it, but whenever you turn it on, it does reset. So let me show you. I'll plug it in, and I think I've got it turned off. Let me see, hopefully. Yes, I have it turned off. Okay. So I plugged it in. I've got the power switch inside of it off. Now you might say, well, no you don't. Lights are on. There's two power switches. I mean, there's two... Uh, uh, power setups. Whenever you plug it in, you get 110 to the lights and they're working. And then inside you have this little board. Now you can't see nothing. <laughs> nothing. It's so dark. Let me put a little light on the subject. We'll pull this board out here in a little bit. You'll get a nice close up view of it. So. This is what yours will look like inside. It's a three relay board. And there is a switch over here on the side. Okay. Now when I turn this switch on, watch what happens with our gantry. So I moved that out into the middle purposely. I got nothing. I wonder if it's because I unplugged the front of the board. Probably. Let me plug the front of the board back in and then we'll try that one more time. Okay, I pull, plugged the board back in. I'll show you all this up close here in a minute, folks. I know you can't see it very well, but I'm going to turn on this switch and watch what happens. See how the, the, uh, the, the gantry and the trolley and everything is out there in the middle? So when I turn it on, okay, and I turned it right back off. So what happened? It moved over to the left, going to its home position because it knows that it's not at home. And again, this is, this is most cranes do this, but we're talking about this specific one, the big choice one. So, and we'll look at the schematics later and figure out why it does that. So it went back to the left where it's supposed to be, and then it went back forward where it was supposed to be. Now on this particular one, there's a spring missing up here on the thing, so if you leave it on, it just keeps running and running and running and running. But basically, it goes back to its home position. If you hold that switch in, uh, the game will not coin up. Let me see if I can get something to rig that closed so I can show you how that works. Okay, so I just wedged a little box up there to hold that pin in place for now so that it thinks it's all the way forward. If yours doesn't have a problem there, it'll stop when it gets forward. Okay, and the last thing we're going to do is if you hit this switch, 
it thinks that the claw has went all the way down and then tries to raise it back up again. However, it's all the way up, so it can't do that. But if you look at the gear back there, when I hit that, see how the gear moves? Okay, so what does that tell you? It tells you that all three motors work fine. The one that goes left and right works fine because it goes back home. And the one that goes forward and back works fine because it goes back home. And the one that pulls the, the um, uh, string back up works fine because it goes back home. I don't know about the, the uh, claw yet. I don't know if I even have a way of testing that without... If I hit this, it might. I think I have to open that one to get it to do it. But anyway, we can test that after we get it working. We need to get it where we can actually move the thing around. Okay. So if I come in here and I put it, try to put a credit on it, I can even do that. Nothing happens. Right? But I think that's kind of typical. Sometimes it will light up the lights on this particular brand. So if I hit the back arrow, if you listen, you hear a click from the switch, but you don't hear a click of the relay coming on. You also didn't hear a click of the relay coming on whenever I coined it up. If I hit this second one, You hear the ping, it's kind of like a spring sound. Okay, now notice how that's different than this. So the first one you're hearing is the button, just the switch on the button. The second you're hearing the switch on the button and a relay turning on. Okay. So what, what are, why are we doing all this? We're just figuring out everything that it's doing because it'll help us figure out what it's not doing. Okay. So when I hit this, I do get a relay coming on, but it comes off as soon as I let go of it. And nothing moves. Okay? When I hit this one, nothing happens. All right? So, let's figure it out. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do to test it out is I have a partial schematic of it, but I don't have anything that tells us what the wiring is. So I have went through and figured it all out, um, and that's this. So if you've got one, this should help you. So this is the board that we're talking about. It has three relays, has the potentiometer for the claw, and it has a big weird connector on the back and a big weird connector on the front that was probably less weird in 1980. But now it's just weird. So when it's mounted in the game, the connector that goes on the front says that uh, the bottom pin is number one. Um, yeah, you can kind of see it. See on the plastic it says the same thing. Right? The wiring works different though. It Basically, you see how the bottom pin is number one and it's back here on the back? On the connector, it's on the front is where the wire goes in. And it's just the way that the, the connector is made. But the very bottom pin is number one, okay, as mounted in the game. And you can't really plug it in wrong because it's, see how there is an extra pin on the back? So it won't plug in wrong, okay? But with that said, pin one had nothing on it. Pin two uh, had a brown wire, which goes to the back button on the on the. Uh, the control panel, the button that makes it go back. Pin 4 was a green wire, which also went to the back button. So the, both of those wires go to it. I guess it wouldn't really matter which way you put it. Um, you just want it where the, the button is open and then it closes when you push it. That's how they have it wired at least. We may end up finding something's been changed and it's wrong, but that's how it is right now. So the, gr the brown and the green uh, uh, wires go to, pin 2 and pin 4 go to a the button that goes backwards. Pin 5 and pin 7 or a black wire and a white and blue wire that go to the coin door for that make the coin light light up. Okay. Pin eight is the coin switch, and pin it's blue. And pin twelve is the coin switch, and it's purple. All right, I had a whole bunch of people come in. So pin ten is a yellow wire, sixty volts, along with pin sixteen, a yellow wire. Those two are sixty volts AC. Okay. Pin 15 is a black wire that goes to the coin meter, and on the board it's hooked to ground. 
and it's also hooked to this coin light wire, the black wire. So on the board, they're connected together. And on the board, all of that is also hooked to uh, the button on the uh, uh, brown wire, the back button, the brown wire for the back button. Okay, and uh, the, the, on the other side of the coin meter, there is a red wire that's going to the um, coin switch. Eighteen and twenty are two gray wires that are thirty-one volts AC in my machine. Now, I believe these are supposed to be twenty-four, and these are supposed to be more like forty-eight, but they're high because it's not regulated. So if you get that and it's too high, that's not going to be your problem. Okay, pin twenty-four and pin twenty-eight are a white and black wire and a white and green wire that make the right button on the play on the um, um, on the control panel work and pin 24 is connected to ground on the board so I went all through here I took the relays off I went all through here trying to figure out what is what so this is R5 this is R5 this is R4 this is R5 and then we got one two three I haven't figured out which one's which yet okay so here is the schematic as posted by PC John on the Killer List of Video Games. He found this a while back, and it uh, is very cool. You can kind of figure it out just by messing with the board because it's so simple, but I don't understand all of it yet, so I'm trying to track that down and figure out what's going on. So, if you've got problems with yours, maybe this will help you too. So, over here, we have a 24-volt supply and a 48 volt supply, which on our wiring we figured out. We've got 30 volts coming in and 60 volts coming in. So it's a little high, but it's just because the line voltage is higher and the um, it's not regulated. So when it comes in, it goes through two sets of bridge rectifiers, which are just discrete diodes. Okay. Okay, so the, there's a fuse for um, the 60 volt and a fuse for the um, 30 volt. The 60 volt diodes are right here that make up the bridge rectifier, rectifier, and the 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 um, I should say the 48 volt diodes are here that make up the bridge rectifier. Mine just happened to be 60 coming into it, and then the bridge rectifier here is for the 24 volt, which on mine just happens to be 30. So these four create a bridge, and these four create a bridge. Okay. Um. So that's what we have going on here. So we have the voltages coming in, they go through the diodes, and then out of the diode you get a um, positive 48, and then a ground, which they call a negative 48 on the schematics. Okay, And then there is a capacitor tying the positive and the negative together. So C1 should be a 47 microfarad 100 volt. On ours it was 100 microfarad 100 volt. So I replaced it with that. Okay. And then on the other one, on the, the 24 volt, same thing. You get a positive voltage coming out that's 24 volts and then a negative voltage coming out that's ground. Notice they're isolated though. They keep them separate. And The reason they do that is because the 24 volts is running the relays on the board. The 60 volts, um, let's find it, the 60 volt, it's for the 48 volt, the 48 volt runs over here and is only used, if you look, is only used for the claw and the motors. So nothing on the board actually uses the 60 volts, although it does run through uh, some of the relay switches. Okay. But the relays are 24 volt relays, all five of them. Okay, so do we have a problem there? No, we don't, because you can hear the one relay clicking on, so that's the 24 volt, it's working. And you can see the motors running whenever they're not centered, so that's working. So our voltages are fine, and I'm testing them, and we're fine, and everything's cool, right? And I've tested on the actual wires, and I've got 30 volts and 60 volts coming in. So I don't have a power problem. I've got some kind of problem on the board, and I don't have a, a motor problem because all three of them work. So let's see if we can figure out how this sucker is supposed to work. 
This switch right here that says C, that means coin. I have figured it out. It definitely means coin. Coin switch. Bam. Okay. So when you hit the coin switch, oh, uh, let me show you one other thing before we do that. Relay three. Remember we heard the clicking when we hit that one button? Okay. Well, the button we were hitting is the ZW button. So ZW, we'll write down here, ZW is the move right button. Okay. So we were hitting that and we were hearing a relay click on and off. So I was pressing this button in, click, and when I did it would connect that dot to that dot, right, on the schematic, right. So what, what, what was that doing? Well we were connecting relay 3 to ground through the button. The other side of relay 3 is connected directly to the 24 volts. So on a game that is um, on a game that is um, that has no credits on it or anything, if it's turned on, if you hit that button, you're going to turn that relay on because that's just how it's wired. So when it was doing that, that's correct. That's how it should. That's how it should work. So that does not mean that we are coined up or anything. Um, because it, it it should do that no matter what. It also tells us, that, once again, that our 24 volts works, or that shouldn't be able to happen. Okay. All right. So, with that said, coin switch. If you hit the coin switch, it connects 24 volts through the switch and turns on relay 4. Now, relay 4 is this little sucker. I wrote R4 next to it so I wouldn't get them confused. Okay. It turns on relay 4 because the other side of relay 4 again is connected directly to ground. The negative is ground. Since since we're DC by this point, it's it's no longer neutral and it's no longer AC voltage. Okay. Because we ran through the bridge which turned it into DC voltage. So when you hit the coin switch, it should turn on relay 4. Okay. But I don't see a way for Relay 4 to hold itself on. I may be wrong about that, though, but it's irrelevant anyways, as we'll get to here in a second. There's also this line where it also, when you hit the coin switch, connects power through this line over to here. Now this, see how this doesn't have a switch number on it like the other ones do? Or a relay number on it? It's just nothing? That's because that's a jumper. Okay, so if it's connected this way, spoiler alert, it is. If it's connected this way, it would send power through this diode to relay number one. The other side of relay number one is directly connected to ground. Again, I don't know what the LG means. I guess that's what maybe that is. Okay, it would also send power through this diode and through this diode and turn on relay 2. However, relay 2 would not energize because this button hasn't been pressed. The button would connect it to ground. Notice it's very similar to the button over here that we already know is the right button. That's because this is going to be the other push button on the control panel. That's going to be back. So let's say VW equals move back button. So what's going on? When I hit the coin switch, this relay and this relay are not coming on and they should come on. Okay? I don't hear anything when I hit the coin switch. So these should click on, but something ain't working right. I checked the wiring and it's fine. I also checked the switch and it's fine. But there's got to be some kind of problem. Maybe there's a problem on the connection or something. But I believe that's my whole problem, is that's not turning on Relay 1 or Relay 2. It could also be that these uh, diodes have a problem. 
Okay. Again, it, it shouldn't turn on relay two if you don't hit the button. Okay. So let's say that we so let's say that it was working right. Okay. And it sends power through here and it turns on relay one. Okay. So now relay one will have power for as long as the coin switch is pushed in and only as long as the coin switch is connected. So it must have some way to hold itself on, right? So relay one gets power. And when it does, it would throw this switch, relay one, this way. And so now this is connected. Here we go. Okay. This see this right here? See how this line jumps over the line? That's because they're not connected. This one doesn't. See how right here? They don't draw it with a dot or anything, it just it touches it. That means that those lines are connected. So that's what's going on here. A little confusing. So relay one gets its power through the coin switch. And now it pulls in. So the line is over here now. So it's getting its power now through here until switch four opens, it will have its power. Whenever switch four opens, relay one will die. Okay. So I should be getting relay one, whichever it is, turning on. And I should also have the ability to turn relay two on if I hit the back button. I also should be getting power coming over here through this, this is a light bulb, through this resistor and this triac. Okay. So then I, so the game should be sitting there with relay one pulled in and relay two having energy on one, having power on one side where you can push it in. So then you push this button in. Well, as soon as you push this button in, relay two starts the motor moving over on the, uh, over on the side. So relay one isn't moving a thing. What it's doing is it's turning both of these, which is basically reversing the power over here. We'll talk about that in a minute, okay? But now we have the potential for relay two to work. So when you press this button, relay two should energize through this way, you know, and we've already got uh, this going. So it's getting power. Yeah, it's holding itself on through the switch on relay one. And relay relay one cannot open until switch four opens, right? So it's getting power to itself through relay one. So I can hit that button and hit it two or three times, it looks like, if I want. Maybe. We'll see if they've wired anything in. But whenever I hit that, it's going to do some stuff over here. When this switch closes, it makes a motor move, blah, blah, blah. We'll get to that in a minute. Um, so when I hit it, it will turn on this switch. So if this switch were to turn on, hmm, I don't know why they need that. <laughs> oh, I guess if switch one opens, relay one no longer has a way of getting power, okay? So we don't, we don't know what switch one, two, three, or four is yet. We're gonna to have to figure that out. It's gonna be one of the limit switches on the, um, on the crane. Um, so once this moves, maybe it opens switch one, you know? So once the, once the trolley starts moving back, maybe it opens switch one, and then uh, it can't get power this way anymore, so it gets its own power. Yeah, that's what's going on. Okay, so it starts moving back. So you press the button, and when you do, it connects, it pulls the relay in and connects this line. Well, it's now getting power this way because it can't get it this way anymore because switch one just opened because you moved off of home. And so whenever you stop, it's going to stop there because it can't get power anymore. It can't get it through the coin switch, and it can't get it through this switch, and it can't get it through itself because it can't that's open hmm fascinating so that would mean that uh, yeah relay one would still be on though because see look it's coming through here so relay one would hold itself on but relay two would only hold itself on until switch one opened up interesting all right 
So once it does that, you've moved back. And if you remember, that's how they operate. You can move it back, but then it stops. You can't hit it twice. So once it does that, all you can do is hit the one that goes right. Okay. So here's the one that goes right. So we already know that that one works. Well, why isn't it moving the... the um, um, why isn't it letting us move to the right? It's because relay one's not on. This hasn't been tripped. <sighs> this whole section is about the light bulbs. We're, we're just going to forget about that. So I think my whole problem is relay one's not coming on. Simple as that. We'll figure it out, though. Okay, so over here, look, look at this little bit of work. So they've got the 48 volts coming over here, and if relay one is off, then the 48 volts connects this way. That's the position it relays on if it's off, right? Now over here is the ground. So it's the ground. And if the relay's off, it's connected here. So this side of the motor, we'll call this the, the, the bottom side <laughs> of the motors. I can't see what that one says. MG, maybe? Booker T. So this is the bottom side of the MV. It's the ground if the relay is not on. So, well, you know, a, a DC motor, if, if you reverse the polarity, you move the motor this way or that way. So that's how you get the motor making the trolley go this way or go this way. Okay. So without the relay on, the bottom side of each motor is grounded. So how does the top side get power? They've got it set up, and I can't completely see it because it's not, it's kind of faded. But basically, the motors are set up where if the switches are, are open, um, it provides power to the, that motor to move itself back to the home position. And it does them in order, too. I can't completely figure it out yet, but because I don't know which one's which. Looks like Z is on this one. ZW and VW. Looks like Z is the one that moves to the right, right? So that's the second one that works. If the claw is down, this one works first. So let's say the claw is down. Oh, how would this get power? It would get it through this switch. Like if this switch... If switch three was open, I think what they're showing us yeah, I can see it. This is what our schematic should look like. So if this switch were not how it should be, it would push up into here, and it would connect that side of the motor to this line right here, which is connected to 48 volts. Okay? So you turn on the game, and the claw is down. If it's down, there's a switch on the trolley that is, op that is closed or open or whatever, and this bar is up here connecting it. So what happens is it starts turning the, the motor to raise it up. When it gets all the way up, it opens this switch. Switch three. Okay. So once it opens it, you have just connected the switch that goes left to right, I mean the motor that goes left to right, to this line. See, through here. We're reinventing the wheel, people, but we're going to figure it out. We're re-understanding the wheel. Let me draw the other line in. Somebody's going to need this eventually, and they're going to be like, Man, I can't thank you enough, man. The rest of you just are along for the ride. Okay, so uh, once Switch 3 gets back to home, it would do this like it is now. That's in its normal position, so the, the claw is all the way up. It is now connected this, so this motor now... You know, it's getting its ground down here. This motor now is getting connected 
through here up to here and relay 3 is not on hmm Hmm. Yeah, I don't get that one. What am I missing there? The motor is now connected to there. Uh, oh. Yeah, it could get voltage through this diode. So switch 2 is not open, it would be up here, right? So switch 2 is the one on the left, right? So if the, if the trolley is not on the left, that bar there would be up here, which means that the motor would be connected through here, through the diode, through here, to the same 48 volts, okay? So this motor, the motor that moves it to the left, would run until switch two open. See, they're all off one. So this is the one on the on the up. Uh, this is the one on the left. Okay. So then let's say it gets all the way over to the left and opens this switch. Well, if it does, that would put this bar back down here. <laughs> right. So once this bar is back down here, then this one, this is the uh, the forward back ones back one. It would get, be getting its power if it wasn't all the way forward. Wait, I skipped one, didn't I? Yeah, okay. If it wasn't all the way forward, this switch would be up here. So, bump, 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 bump. That would be connected. It could draw power through there. Through there. Through there, through there, through there, through there. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so that's the switch all the way to the, the, the front, the home position. But look how this is set up where it does them in order. So this one can't move unless this one... Or this one can't move until this one gets to its home position. This one can't move until this one gets to its home position. Just because they've wired the power through these freaking switches. It's brilliant, people! It's brilliant! Okay. So it gets all the way back home, and these switches end up in this position, like this. Okay? And then you put a coin in, and it turns on relay 1, which is what ours isn't doing. Well, that would make this go this way, and this go this way, right? Which reverses the power. So now, the ground that's coming up, instead of going down here, it would go over here. And the 48, instead of going down here, it would go down here, right? So it just reverses the voltage. So now all of the motors are going to move the other way whenever they get power. Right? So the first one that you move is the is the one going back, right? So the, we know that the way that we do that is we hit this button which turns on relay 2. Well, as relay 2 turns on, this switch closes. So if that switch, which isn't connected to anything over here, cut closes, you are now sending your ground through here, through relay 2. Uh, it can't go that way. <laughs> How's it get to it? How's it do it? So what would be the that would be the first one we're moving. And it's like that. Oh yeah, we've reversed it, so the voltage is this way. No, that doesn't work, does it? I don't completely understand it, but you get the you get the gist of it. They're basically reversing it around. This, by the way, is the claw itself. That's a rheostat on the board. Um so this one is given power by R3. So basically once R3 is the other one, so once it goes to the right and you blah, 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 it's going to make the claw drop on its own. But anyway, you get the gist of it. I've about got it all figured out, but I don't, I just have to keep thinking about this. Let's see. 
so this is definitely ground if that pulls in this is definitely ground ground that's now ground that's ground I'm trying to figure out how you make this motor move it's got to get its power through there Yeah, here's our voltage on this side. The diode is what's throwing me off. I don't completely understand that, but I'm sure, I'm sure some of you already have it figured out. <laughs> and then the next time you do it, Oh uh, yeah, so as soon as you move off the home position, that would break. We already figured that out. Okay, so this one would be... Getting power here. As soon as R3 comes on. But that would be the ground side. Hmm... It's got me confused with the uh, the ground and the positives on the diodes, but I'm sure it works like that, or they wouldn't have it wired like that. But you folks that understand it better can probably uh, appreciate the brilliance of their little design. But for us, what we need to figure out is what the hell's going on with Relay 1. It could just be this diode's no good. It tests fine, but it is not. So uh, that's our first culprit, though. Maybe I'll swap that diode and see if that gets us going. I need to figure out which one's R1, which one's R2, and which one's R3. So let me do that first, and then we'll move on from there. Okay, folks, so Relay 1 is actually the center one. Relay 2 is the bottom one, and Relay 3 is the top one. Don't ask me. I just work here. Okay, uh, R4 and R5, I was going to show you that. I don't completely understand those either, but it looks like... You don't even really need them. The only thing that they're used for, it appears, is if, you're, if you've got it set for two quarters. So I mentioned before that we have this switch here that isn't, that's a jumper. It's not uh, labeled. So we've got ours connected like this. So one coin gives you the power. Right? If you had it like this, it makes it more complex. Where then the only way that the power gets over here is if... R5 is connected, right? And so R5 gets its power through R4. So when the coin switch pulls in, it closes R4. And I don't see how... <laughs> I don't see how R5 gets power. Once it does that, I guess this connects over to here. Which completely isolates R5. It looks like to me, but what do I know? But there's some way for R5 to get power. Once it gets power, that's what turns it on. So all these are used for is here. Dun, dun, dun. Voltage through here. Da, da, da. Hmm. Basically, if you've got it jumpered that way, you've got it set on one coin. If you were to do it the other way, it would be set where it needs two coins. 
to coin up. Appears to be the deal. So ours is on one coin. Okay, so I replaced this with the new diode. It didn't change anything. Okay, so then I started thinking, well, wait a minute. What I need to do is figure out the schematic because it's so simple. I mean, all we're trying to do is get this power to right here. It should, I mean, to right here. It, it's just one switch. I checked the wiring's all fine. Everything's cool. All right. So I'm thinking, well, maybe we need this for more than I think, whatever. But it's pretty simple that it just goes right over to the diode. And it does. All of that's fine. So this is the diode that I replaced. All of that's fine. Okay. But then I figured out that this side of the wire does not connect directly to 24 volts. It connects to all kinds of other stuff. So it's not quite right. So I started thinking, well, maybe there's two versions of the board. Maybe there's another version of the board where it was connected directly to 24 volt. But basically, if you look at our wiring, just so you follow, pin 10, I mean, uh, pin 8 and pin 12 there go to the coin switch. Okay, so one of the two of those should connect straight to 24 volts. And so, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight is this pin right here. 9, 10, 11, 12 is this pin, which is the one that comes in and blah, 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 blah. Okay, so pin 12 is here, and this is pin 8. Okay, so pin 8 should have 24 volts on it for that to be, you know, like they, uh, like the schematic. So this is pin 8, and it comes around, and it connects to this, and I thought, oh, that must be where it connects to 24 volts. So I looked, nope, that's where it connects to some relays, 4 and 5. So now I thought, okay, well, it continues on. Over here must be where it connects to 24 volts. Nope. <laughs> Over here it connects to a couple relays, right? And then it goes off the board. What the crap? Nothing makes any sense. So I thought, well, I'll think about it a little bit. So I went home and thought about it a little bit. And so I started Googling, you know, the Googles. I started Googling pictures of this board to see if there was different versions. And I did see some that looked like they were laid out a little different, but, yeah, you know, hard to tell from pictures. That freaking worth point. I'm sure you all agree with me that worth point sucks. If you don't know about that, it's a website that basically keeps track of old eBay ads, and they show you little tiny pictures, and then you have to subscribe. You have to, like, pay a fee to see the original eBay ad that had the cool pictures on it. I ain't doing that. I ain't gonna do it. I ain't gonna do it. So anyway, I kept looking, kept looking, kept looking, and guess what I found? A whole other set of schematics. So, we were looking at schematics that are about right, but not quite right. So, with our new set of schematics, Wah, 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 wah. Here's what I found. Here's what I see. Okay, now this one's even more complex. I'm going to show just a um, view of them in case somebody gets this that you, they can pause and look at the schematic. So here's what you got. Hopefully that'll come out in 3D high def for you and you can figure it all out. Okay, it's very similar to the other ones we were looking at. But it has updated stuff kind of showing the layout on the board and it shows the pin out, which I went through all that trouble to find or to, to make my own, you know. But it shows the back pins that I never did. Okay, so where are we? Uh, basically, we are looking at right here, okay? So this is exactly like my board. So this is the one we were just looking at that provides 24 volts. That's the coin switch off the game, I mean, off the board. Provides 24 volts to turn on this relay, and then it goes over here to a connection, right? The little jumper that we've got soldered, which then provides power to this relay and power to this relay. And look, it tells you that the middle one's relay one, like I said, bottom one's relay two, and the top one's relay three. I about had it figured out. I just had the wrong schematic, okay? So this is the diode that we just replaced, because I was saying, well, why won't the 24 volts just jump through? I don't get it. It's because the 24 volts isn't here, because it's not here, but that's how it's designed. So this one is just like our board. So 
it does the same thing. You just saw where it goes around the edge of the board and it jumps over here. And just a second ago, I was saying, yeah, that's where it's getting its 24. Nope. Going to a relay. All right. Look, it goes back and it goes off the board through switch four. Okay. And then back over to here, back on the board, this little dotted line connects it to here and this dotted line means it's on the bottom of the board and it comes around and it comes around and what does it connect to the bridge rectifier that creates the 24 volts so the reason I don't have 24 volts here is because I don't have 24 four volts here the reason I don't have 24 volts here is because it goes off the board I have 24 volts here this is connected so I must have 24 volts here that freaking switch is messed up. After all that, it's going to be a switch on the up on the trolley. So we need to look at that and figure out which switch it is and test it and take it apart and fix it if we need to. And uh, we might have a broken wire or something, and that ought to get us going. So let me go back and look at the uh, look at the trolley and see if I can figure it out. Okay, so on the trolley, you've got two different switches. This one appears to be one of the switch that makes it think that it's all the way down so if I hit that it tries to wind it up some more right and then this switch is the one that this bar hits when you get slack in this so if you this should be open when the when the thing gets all the way down you lose tension on this which makes this bar drop which hits this which should which should close the switch well it's closed right now um, I think it's backwards too. Whenever it closes it, it opens it. So right now I have 24 volts right here, but I don't have it here and I don't have it here. So I think it being closed has opened the voltage. That's my theory at least. So, um, yeah, with that bar up like that, I think that switch should be open. So whenever you get some slack, that will hit that and close it but it's closed right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it off and very carefully bend that a little bit so that it's bent open and then see if that uh, gives us our 24 volts on this pin or that pin. By the way, these top two are soldered together. I know. Let me see if I can zoom in. So the top two are soldered together. The bottom two have individual wires. So I think maybe that thing's just misadjusted. You see how bent up it is. Obviously, that's not right. So um, that's our next step. Okay, folks, so I adjusted it out a little bit so that it's open right now. And so this is typical of other cranes, too, so I already just kind of know that's how these work. Basically, when it starts dropping the claw, there's weight on the claw, so it keeps this line taut. When it gets to the bottom and hits something, there's no longer weight on the claw. And so the string, since it keeps unwinding, the string allows this pulley to go down because this is on a, it has a, uh, the string allows this pulley to go down because it's on a spring. So it starts going down. When it goes down, the hip of it hits this switch and closes it. So on this, so think about what happens. So the claw is all the way down and it's touching something. And that's why the line goes goes uh, 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 slack okay so since it does that it's now time to go backwards because you're already down on the stuff so this hip hits this button this is the switch number four from the schematics that we saw that the relays would hold on until switch four hits and then relay one will release which reverses all the power and makes everything go backwards so once the claw hits it makes this go slack the hip hits this reverses it it makes relay one open uh, and everything starts going backwards. There should be something that makes the claw close, um, which it isn't doing right now, but we'll figure that out. Um, and then uh, the one that drops the line will start going backwards, pulling the line back up. And then once it gets all the way up and it opens this switch, like we looked at on the, on the schematics, it will then make it go this way until it closes that switch, which will then make it go this way until it closes that switch. We still have it rigged up with a box, but we'll fix that later. Um, so we're about there if this fixes it. So we now have our 24 volts up here that we didn't have before just from opening 
bending that, right? So since we're like that, if we hit the coin switch, we should hear our relay one and two come on now, or relay one come on now, and we do. But it sounds like it's not holding on, because every time I click it, it's coming on, and then when I let go, it goes off. So we about got it, but not quite. So why would it do that? The contacts in the relay are probably dirty. So we'll mess with that next. Okay, so what's happening now is when I close the switch, you're hearing a click. It's because finally the power is getting all the way through here, through here, and back to this one. Remember, this one isn't clicking because we don't have the button pulled in. But when I let go of the switch, I hear this click back off. Okay? So it's not holding itself on. Now remember we looked at how does it hold itself on? Basically power through a relay on itself, right? That should pull over and then that should hold it in. <laughs> right? So basically this is the same as the other one except this switch 4 is over here. Switch 4 is needs to be closed before the coin switch is connected to 24 volt. Um, so we need to, the relay basically isn't holding itself in. That's probably because the relay is dirty. So I'm going to show you how you can test that. Um, you can actually clean these instead of replacing them. So I pulled all three of them out and I'll show you how you can check them. Okay, folks, so I've taken the case off. Now, to be honest, I always kind of pry them off. There's probably a tool to do it, but I don't have the tool. But if you get that case off, you're down to the goods. And these relays are real simple things. They look complex. They're not complex at all. There are two uh, connections down here, which are the actual coil itself. It's just like a pinball coil. We do all the pinball stuff. I'll test this one because it's still got the top on it. If you put your meter on resistance, you want to check ohms. And don't do any of that beep test, people. That beep test is useless. Just don't even, don't even try it. You want to see what resistance is. Not if it's connected or not. Everything's connected. Okay, let's see if I can do it with one hand. I, I could get out the other leads, but that'd be way too easy. Okay, 640 ohms, right? We were talking about that earlier. So... Basically, that's the measurement across the coil, from one side of the coil to the other side of the coil. It's just a big wrap of wire. And when they run power through those two pins, it pulls the coil in, which pulls this little metal thing here. It basically makes it a big magnet, right? So it pulls that thing in like that. See that there? See that there? See what it's doing? See how it's moving? So when it's on, it pulls it in. When it's off, it pulls it out. Now, if you look carefully here on the thing, See this little gold-colored blade there? And see how it moves? Okay, now see this wire back here? So that's connected to the blade. And this wire goes around and it's connected to there. So if there is a wire connected to this pin, it connects through onto the blade. And right now, when it's off, it's touching the top blade, this one, up here. When the coil pulls in, it moves, and now this wire is touching that pin right there. So that's all a relay does. It just switches things back and forth. Click, 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 click. So when it's on, it's this way. When it's off, it's that way. And there's four sets of them on each relay. One here, one there, one there, and one there. Well, what happens is those little contacts get dirty, just like on a pinball machine especially if they've sat around for a long time, and they no longer conduct electricity. So, I think you can pull this little plastic thing out of there too to get at it better, but basically we need to clean those little contacts. Now, you can test it with your meter, and right now, when it's not pulled in, that pin will be connected to that pin. And so you can test it, I probably can't right now with one hand, but we'll see. Maybe my chopstick uh, skills are getting better. 
This is like, well, I won't say that joke. I'm not allowed to say that. So right now, that one's connected very well. See? So that means this relay in that direction is fine. And you can check the next one. Also fine. You have four sets here that you can go through. You can do it better if you don't uh, try to do it with one hand. So those relays are fine in the one direction. Now, we need to pull it in and then see if this one and this one are connected. Right now, they're not because the relay is not pulled in. No, I'm not going to be able to do that. They're too close. And yeah, so there's no connection between them, right? Oh, and, you know, whenever you're connected, you should get down below one ohm. Mine's always point two because the leads are a little worn out. Okay, so that's what we need to do. So we have to take it apart and check each one of them like that, and then pull it in and see if it makes it where now this one is shorted to that one. Because if that doesn't happen, like if this one, see that's what we're looking at one of these right now, right? So there's the wire coming in, and it's right now it's on that one. But if the relay pulls in, now it's on that one. We need all of those connections to be clean. Because what's happening is it's pulling in, but the power's not running through it because the, the contacts aren't clean. So you can buy new cube relays if you want, and that would fix it. Or you can just clean them and fix it. So how am I going to clean it? I'm going to try to clean it with contact cleaner. Leaves no residue, safe for plastics, has a quick drying formula. That's what the QD stands for. You can buy this stuff at the box store. So while you're talking about buying stuff, go check out our website. Go to lionsarcade.com. We have a parts page, and on our parts page, we have a lot of links to things that we use in some of our repairs. You can check those out. A lot of them are on Amazon. If you go to Amazon after following one of those links, you can order stuff like that. And uh, if, if you go there through one of our links, it gives us a tip for sending you there. So we appreciate that. But it's on our website, lionsarcade.com, on the parts page. We also have our T-shirts and stuff like that on there if you uh, are looking to support the channel. So go check that out. So I'm going to I'm gonna test all of these. I'm going to see if I find some that aren't working right. I'm going to spray contact cleaner on them, see if that gets them where they're going down below zero, 1 ohm um, whenever we get it like that. And then we'll put all three of them back in and see if that improves the working of our machine. Okay, folks, so after carefully testing our beautiful board here, the relays are fine. Okay. So what's happening is when I hit the switch, relay one does come in and it does hold itself on. And if I test for 24 volts at the um, at the relay, I've got it. So the coin switch closes. It gives it. Oh, this is the wrong one. Coin switch closes. It gives it 24 volts right here, which holds on relay one. That's happening. Okay. This switch is fine. This switch is fine. Uh, and then the two over here are fine. So relay one is working swimmingly, but it's also supposed to turn on relay two. So relay two should be uh, uh, turned on where if you hit the button, it moves, but it doesn't. So why is that? So after testing and testing and testing, every oh, by the way, when I was hitting the coin switch, we were hearing the coin meter go up. It wasn't the relay turning on and off. Relay one was holding on, okay? If I hit the this button, nothing happens. But if I hold down the coin switch, that keeps power constantly going to relay one and relay two. Then when I hit the button, the trolley moves. So why would it do that? It's because it doesn't have another way of getting power. So it should get power through the coin switch, but only for a second. And then it should hold itself on through relay one, I check this switch, it's working, and switch one. Switch one is the last one when the trolley comes forward. So switch three is when it pulls up the claw, that one at the bottom of the of the, the trolley, um, or I think that's the trolley, at the bottom of the trolley. Switch two is when the trolley goes to the left, it hits one over here, and switch three is the one where it comes to the front, that one that's, that we don't have the piece for, so it's in the wrong spot. That's switch three. So, I mean, a switch one. So that basically, whenever that gets back home, 
it should open that connection and close this connection. So relay two can't hold itself on because switch one isn't working right. I know all this is complex, but it's really just a few switches here and there. So what th they're using this switch to where it makes certain things connect when it's open and certain things connect when it's closed. So we need to look at switch one and figure out why our power can't get through that. Okay, so we move the trolley back. So this is switch three. This is switch four. This is switch two that it hits when it goes all the way over. It hits that. And then when it goes forward, it hits this, which if you look, is actually back there. All right? And if you look very closely, that wire is broke. The green wire is fine, but the other one needs resoldered. So we'll solder that wire on and see if that gets it where relay two will hold itself on. Okay, so we soldered the wire back on. Now, let's see here. We click it. I heard the relay hold in. Yeah, buddy. We're making much more progress. At least now you can coin it up and move the thing. We're getting there. Okay, folks, so if you hit the back, so we got it where to coin up and it'll sit there. And if you hit back, it'll move back and then once you let go, it slowly keeps going back. Well, what in the world is that? This is the motor that moves it back and the only way it gets power is through switch two. Okay. So switch two is the one on the left. So if the trolley, so we're trying to go forward and back. If that trolley starts moving left or right, it no longer can get power. So it gets its power through switch two. Um, if you move that trolley a little bit to the right, the motor stops going back. If you move the trolley back to where it hits the switch again, the motor keeps going back. Okay. Switch one is the one on the front. Once it moves back, it's off that switch. Okay, so it connects up to here. Well, if you connect that switch again, it stops it from being able to move back. So there's something going on on these lines, right? So I looked and looked, and if you look really close, down on the board, there is a diode right there that's actually soldered on the pins of the board. It's a 5407. 5408, I'm sorry. It's a 1N 5408, which is just a thick old general grid, um, a general rectifier diode. I think. I might have that wrong. <laughs> but it's thicker because it's more, it can handle more juice. So I replaced it with another one. It tests fine, but it must be leaky, right? But uh, I replaced it with a new one, and now it moves back and it stops when you let go of the button. And it stays there. Now, if you keep hitting the button, it won't move at all. So you get one shot. You just move it back, and then when you let go of the button, that's that. Um, and the reason for that would be because something must... Oh, yeah, it's because of the relay. We figured that out on this one. These schematics are better for one thing, and those are better for another. When you hit the button, R2 starts moving. It goes together, which starts the motor moving. Right here, this is the leaky diode we were talking about. And so okay. when you hit R2, you hit the button, R2 comes on, and it holds itself on because it pulls the switch in. Right? But when you let go of the button, it's no longer connected, so the relay opens, and it can't get power through R1 anymore because switch 1 opened. R1 stays on, though. Because R1 gets power this way. It doesn't have to go through switch 1. So once switch 1 is off the thing, R2 can only get power as long as it's held on. So you can hold the button down and it'll work. As soon as you let go of the button, that's going to close. Because this closes. And then, vamos, right? So then we got to get over here to R3. So when I go to the right, it'll go to the right. And then when I let go, it just sits there. And then if you hit it again, it'll keep going to the right. And it'll do it over and over again. Well, we figured out that that's how that goes. See, it's always connected. Um, so we've got to figure out what gets the claw to drop, which is this um, this uh, motor right here. We already have it going backwards. So you see, if I hit the switch, if I hit this switch, 
I'm connecting those two dots there and there and it makes it go backwards you can see the the thing do its thing but if it's connected like this this can't get any power which it does through another diode <laughs> and switches on R3 yeah so when R R3 is this one so when we go back you are off switch too okay so here's how it works you start moving to the right okay when you do that open switch too so it puts it up here connects that right which means that you can no longer move forward and back once that switch opens so switch 2 is now up here this is your since R1 is in this is your ground through switch 2 to here and to here and since R3 isn't hit I mean since R3 is doing its thing here <laughs> hmm why does it need oh yeah so while you're holding the button down going to the right R3 is open. It's over here. When you let go of the button, switch 2 is now open, so it's up here. So power is coming this way, through here, through here, through here, through here, through R3, through the diode, making it work. So our problem, since we've already cleaned all the, the um, relays and everything, it's probably this diode. So we've got to find where that diode is, and that should do it for us. So here's the motor we're talking about. Here's the line. Um, boom, 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 boom. It connects up through here, around here, back onto the board. That diode right there. That one's probably bad. Well, I tested the diode and it actually was fine. It, you know, I hate replacing diodes that test fine. Sometimes they are bad even if they test good. So what I did was I took the connector off the back of the board and followed the wire, the green wire. Well, I, I checked it with continuity first. And so from the where it came onto the board to the diode, all the way up to the switch, it was not connected. So it was broken somewhere in between. So let me move this out of the way. It's going to fight me. Where the wire, not, not that part. See the black tape there? <laughs> not that area, but up where it curves around, the wire was broke. So... Put the, the uh, green wire together, and um, everything seems cool. So now we have to mess with the claw, make sure we can get it to close, and uh, we'll see how that ends up. Okay, folks, we're down to the claw. So if you have claw problems, the first thing you want to check is the resistance between here and here. Because these two wires go down and connect to a coil. And the problem with the claw is almost always inside here. Just like this one is. One of the wires has came loose from its side of the coil. So if you measure the resistance, you will get, well, it's open, I can tell you that. Because <laughs> it's not even connected. Um, once you get it together, it says on the schematics that the resistance should be around 180 ohms. So if that's not it, it's often the pot on the board that adjusts the strength of the claw. Yeah, that's right. They can make it weaker or stronger. <laughs> Thank you for your quarter. Um, you had to do that though. If it was if it was something really big, uh, it needed to be weaker because the thing would just clamp right over it. And if it was something really small, it needed to be even weaker because it <laughs> make it too easy to grab. Dad would be able to adjust that. Um, so that potentiometer uh, could be the problem, or a broken wire, uh, like always, could be the problem. So I'm going to resolder that on there, and then we'll see what it measures after we solder it back together. Right at 180 ohms, people. I think we're right down here to the last little bit. So I soldered it back on, cut the wire back a little bit. This little thing goes right where it goes through the frame so it doesn't short. So we'll put it all back together, put it back in, and see what that does. Okay, folks, so we got it back in there. I believe the claw is going to work. We'll test it out here in a second. Um, 
cleaned it up, put the door back on it, cleaned the glass and everything, got it all nice. We already had the top lights working. We got the light bulb working in the coin door. By the way, a thing about these, they have kind of a sequence that the lights do. They're 28 volt lights because they run it off the same power supply that runs the, the, uh, the uh, relays that we've been messing with. So whenever it can accept a quarter, that light will be on. When you put a quarter in or hit the coin switch, that light will go off and then this light will come on. However, on this particular machine, they removed the wiring to light up the two um, uh, lights on the, on the uh, control panel. They need to be 26, 28 volts, something like that, or even higher. You saw how the unregulated voltage got even higher in this one. But you can't put just a regular 5 or 12 volt light bulb in it that, people we, that we usually use in arcade machines because it will burn, slap the heck up. So don't do that. All right, folks, I hope you enjoyed it. We'll play it here in a second. Make sure to give us a thumbs up, though, if you haven't already. And make sure to subscribe to us because we do stuff like this all the time. If you like old arcade games and old pinball machines, that's what we do. So subscribe uh, to us. Make sure to leave your comments below on every video. We appreciate it. Now, if you're a negative person that just has nothing but bad things to say, don't be surprised if I'm very rude to you for doing that. But if you, if you have any questions or anything, just let us know. Make sure to check out our website. Go to lionsarcade.com where we show all of our games for sale. We're about to put this one up on there here in just a few minutes. And also make sure to check out my brother's channel, my brother Donnie. If you like watching us work on these old arcade games, you'd probably like my brother Donnie and I working on old buildings. We have a couple old buildings that we're fixing up in a small downtown near here. All right, so I'm going to coin it up. We'll test it all, see how it goes. So when I hit it, it will turn off that light. And on yours, or if you have one that's still wired up the old way, that light will now be on. Okay? It's not super necessary because that button doesn't do anything. That one went off, so as you should know, don't put another quarter in. If you were to put a quarter in now, you saw when we were working on the board, it has no way of knowing or keeping track of how many credits are on it. What's done is done on this one. Once the quarter goes through, until everything resets by that switch opening, switch four, uh, you can't coin it up again. It'll just drop coins in and it, it'll turn the coin meter, but it won't it won't give you a second play or anything Okay, so if you hit this button nothing happens So that one should be lit up and that's the only one that will work. So when we go back It's only going to go as far as it'll go until I let go of it. Okay And then when you let go of it You can't hit it again Again, that's the way the relays are wired inside. You saw that. Now this one, the light would have came on and that light would have went off if they still had the lights uh, lit up. So this one, the same thing is going to happen. As soon as I hit that, it's going to turn off relay one, which was allowing this one to be um, uh, energized. I guess that's relay two, actually. You saw how we did it. Uh, but as soon as I hit this, you can't, you can't, uh, you can't, once you let go of it, you can't hit it again. It's not going to let you do it. And it's going to, that, that, that uh, switch going backwards is going to tell the motor to drop the claw, okay? So when the claw gets down, that little bar going slack behind the cover there, whenever that switch hits, it's going to cancel basically the quarter that was in, light that back up, and it's going to turn everything in reverse. Well, once it's in reverse, what it tells it is, pull the claw shut, pull the claw back up. Once it gets up, it hits the switch, and it says, okay, go back here. Once it hits that switch, it says, okay, go back here. So it's just all switches, basically moving the power backwards. So let's see if we can grab anything. Oh, I missed it. I missed him, but it did, it did grab. And that's that, and it turned our light back on. Let's see if I can hook it at least one time so you'll know that it is at least possible to get it. Whoop, there it is, people. And this was before they had like a sensor really in it. It doesn't even play any music. It's so simple. You saw it's just a little relay board. So there we go. Simple as that. So I hope you enjoyed it. If you've got a big choice crane with the original three relay board or an action crane with the three relay board, hopefully that'll help you out. You saw the schematics. Leave your comments below, and we'll see you on the next video.